So this session will talk about how countries and companies within the Asia Pacific region are developing their own SSA capabilities to help avoid collisions and monitor threats in space. It will seek to explore possibilities for regional SSA cooperation and discuss how, how to develop data standards and structures to improve these capabilities. So therefore, I'd like to open it up to my panelists. Um, first off, I have Mariel Borowitz from the US Office of Space Commerce, Director of International SSA Engagement. Second, I have Siddhi Porn Chanusam with the Director of Space Technology Research Center for Thailand. And then I have um, A.K. Nair Anil Kumar, Telemetry, Tracking, and Command Network of ISRO. And then we have Dr. Wayudi Hasbi, the Head of Research Center of Satellite Technology, National Research Innovation Center, Bryn, for Indonesia. And then finally, we have Sugiyami Kimitoshi, Space Operations Group, Commander Space Operations. Please grab a seat. Thank you. Thank you. So our first question is for Sugiyama-san. Yes. The, J the Japan Air Self-Defense Force is in charge of operating Japan's SSA system. Could you talk about your priorities for developing SSA capabilities and how, if at all, you work with the Japanese international private actors on collecting and analyzing SSA data. Thank you, Victoria. Uh, first of all, I'd like to appreciate all of you. It's my great honor to be here as a panel. Uh, again, I'm uh, Kanes Giyama, the commander of Space Operations Group. As you know, our unit has created just four years ago. It's only four years. But in a short period of time, uh, we are doing great effort. So our Number one priority is to secure uh, the stable use of space. In order to that, the SSA is the basis for that. So uh, we are uh, gathering the sensor data from JAXA radars and uh, process it, and we now know what's going on in the space domain. And the second pillar is uh, international collaboration. So uh, we are collaborating with related agencies and ally the US Space Forces and uh, like-minded countries' space forces. Uh, since the space has no border, so global uh, collaboration is very beneficial, and, and I think it's necessary to conduct uh, the space situational awareness effectively. So we are doing that. Uh, by doing these two efforts, I think, yeah, so far we are doing uh, so well, yeah, in this mission. Does it, okay? That's great, thank you very much. Uh, my next question is for Neil Kumar. Could you talk a little bit about India's civil SSA programs? including ISRO's telemetry, tracking, and command network, as well as the Project Network of Space Object Tracking Analysis, or NETRA. And are you working with Indian SSA companies? Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Victoria. And uh, thanks for the organizers for this wonderful uh, uh, sustain uh, summit on sustainability. As uh, if we consider India as a space-faring nation, we have about uh, 55 operational satellites in orbit. Uh, about 26 are in LEO and others 29 are in GEO. And our uh, SSA uh, primarily focus on safeguarding our space assets. And uh, as far as the capabilities are concerned, uh, analysis part, we are uh, indigenously developed uh, all software required for uh, SSA analysis. Uh, as a civilian activity. And uh, regarding the observational facilities wise, uh, presently we have uh, one uh, multi-object tracking radar, which is situated in uh, our spaceport, Sriheri Kota, which can track of objects uh, of size more than 50 centimeter, up to about 800 kilometer range. And we have plans to set up, it's a project called Netra, is already on. Uh, the NETRA project is aimed to uh, set up a network of observational facilities like radars and uh, 
optical telescopes. And uh, as such, now one optical telescope is in progressing and maybe by uh, within uh, by 2025 beginning, it will be commissioned. Uh, and presently, we have support from many agencies, international cooperation, especially US Space Command, US Space Force. The data what was supplied by them and alerts by CSPOC, we are utilizing that. Apart from the data water we gain from our MOTR, and also has we are um, procuring some data from commercial agencies as well for our SSA purposes. And as a part of international collaborations, we are uh, strong in uh, participation in IADC, IAF, IAA, in all areas. And uh, our people are, are contributing a lot to the space debris related activities internationally as well. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, for City Porn, what SSA capabilities does Thailand believe are needed by regional space actors to ensure there's sufficient SSA data for space flight safety and space sustainability? And currently, are you able to get SSA data in a manner and a format that's actionable for you? Yeah, thank you, Victoria, and uh, thank you, the CQ World Foundation and the uh, Committee Office of Japan to host this and invite me to be a speaker. And um, for Thailand, it's believed that the, we have the four major SSA capabilities should be um, for ensure space fire safety and space sustainability. The first one, of course, is the tracking and monitoring system. It's the, the capability for detecting and monitoring the space object. Another thing is analytics tools for the PD uh, conjunction assessment or rig assessment. And the third one is data sharing platform. This is a quite big issue. That's uh, to share the SSA data among original actor to enable to quick decisions and respond. And um, the last one is cooperation frameworks for protocol and framework uh, for the operation data sharing among the regional space agencies. Besides Thailand, is also realized space safety and security in Thailand. So we uh, have a defined in concern in National Space Master Plan and Nas National Space Act uh, in the milestone in here. And additionally, the Thai government have established SSA and STMs, uh, the, the policies committee, to uh, define the procedure and milestone for the implementation. We have this full purpose to work in, in here. Is the first one is the provide and uh, framework for SSA and STM. And another one is identify the development plan for necessary infrastructure in the world involved in the SSA, STM, and space weather or related technologies and uh, sharing data and facility between the civil and uh, military in Thailand. And the last one, international cooperation policies. And right now we have the, the system, the, the two uh, capability to, for the conjunction and returning to running and uh, to analysis. And also we have the plan to development to enhance the, uh, the accuracy of the tracking. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, for Dr. Hasby. Indonesia has plans to deploy the Tumau National Observatory later this year to help with SSA capabilities. Could you talk about your goals for the ob observatory's SSA capacity? And are there efforts to network this into other SSA systems, whether they're regional or international in nature? Okay, so thank you so much, Victoria. And first of all, I would like to thank uh, Secure World Foundation and also Cabinet Office to invite me for this uh, excellent and very important event. So yes, uh, as you all aware that Indonesia is uh, a country with 17,000 islands and uh, we have uh, a large uh, area of population as well with 260 million uh, people. So, um, and then uh, since 2013, we have, uh, we established our SpaceX to, um, to allow us to um, use the technology in space more and more advanced. And so far we already launched uh, three satellites and next year we will launch one more satellite and, and then uh, three of our satellites still in, uh, exist in orbit within uh, even the first one, 16 years, even this is a Leo, still in orbit very well. And the other two is uh, still working for nine years now. And then just re yesterday we got a very uh, good news that uh, our proposal to, to make a national constellation consists of more than eight satellites is approved by our government. Uh, it's it's cost about 700 million US dollars, so it's it's very uh, very big uh, budget for that. 
So in that case, that's why we really need to establish our SSA capabilities. And one of those is uh, that we have in Timau, the uh, optical observatory. And this is one of the biggest in Asian countries. It has uh, 3.8 meters uh, diameter optical uh, uh, lenses. And um, this is also with support of uh, Kyoto, Kyoto University, we developed this, uh, this, uh, this uh, national observatory in Timau. Uh, Places and uh, so far, yes, we we established all the uh, the cooperation already with with several organizations, not only from Japan but also with China and also with uh, UK and and some university from Netherlands to share the information. And then, um, not only that, uh, we are also very actively engaging in the UN OSA and COPUS, and uh, for example, in also in ITU. Uh, uh, I, I myself now is the acting chair for the working party for APG for the Asia Pacific, talking about the uh, uh, science issue, especially for lunar communication, for example, and also how to protect our uh, radio astronomy uh, or, or quiet zone uh, 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 for, from the uh, uh, interference from the uh, biggest uh, NGSO. Uh, uh, Leo satellite now, so this is uh, the the whole ideas that that we have, and of course we are really open for for the collaboration with establishing the the SSA uh, with our capability and all of your capability. I think the sharing of the data and information is very very, very crucial for us. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you very much, and Mario. So your office is providing is developing the traffic coordination system for space tracks, which you've heard a bit about. This, t this week so far, but we'd love to hear some more about it. Um, it's intended to provide basic SSA services and data to civil commercial actors. And again, could you give us a status report where it stands? How does it intend to ingest data from non-US SSA providers? Sure, absolutely. So as you mentioned, we're developing the civil SSA system in the United States, so the uh, Traffic Coordination System for Space, or TRACS. Uh, the initial uh, version of the system is actually going to come online in just a couple months here in the fall. Um, and then you can think of it as, as an agile system, kind of like your phone. So it's going to get updates over the course of, of time, over the course of this next year, um, and add in additional capability. We're also starting with that initial phase with just a set of beta users, and then we'll be adding on additional users to the system over time. Uh, and it'll eventually be a fully open global system available to all owner operators around the world uh, and other government entities as well. Um, so that's kind of the, the progress of the system and, and how you can expect to see that unfold. Um, and that'll be done in parallel at the beginning with the existing uh, Department of Defense space track system. So it'll be kind of a, a purposeful measured uh, transition. So there'll be a period of time when both are running. In terms of ingesting data, so the system uh, to begin will build on the, the data that the Department of Defense already has. We will ingest that data. We're also looking at ingesting commercial data, and we've been working uh, through a series of Pathfinder uh, experiments with commercial entities already, looking at how we can bring in that data and, and best use that in the system. Uh, and we will continue to do that with the operational system, bringing in commercial data. That's not limited to US companies, so we'd be able to bring in data from uh, different sources around the world uh, eventually. So we're, we're looking at doing it in that way. Great, thank you. Uh, City Porn, how has SSA sharing been discussed at regional fora, such as the Asia Pacific <coughs> Regional Space Agency and the Association of Southeast Asian Nations? Uh, what are some of the challenges to sharing SSA data across national lines in the region? Well, it's for the, the subcommittee on the Space Technology and Application, SAPOSA, in under the ASEAN. We have this project SSA and TM to working on to do the frameworks that uh, consists of in the uh, uh, steering committee and uh, uh, experts committee, in, including in the four groups in here. The, the first group is uh, SSA. The second is a spared uh, traffic management, STM, spared weather, and policy involved. So all of this is working on the together, and we aim to do it in the policy and uh, cap uh, enhance capability, including the operation and service. Uh, this is an initiative, it's a crucial step to enhance the capability in ASEAN as well, it's included in Indonesia 
to working on you know, SSA and STM. So from the, the challenge to the national life within the region is the first one, the data sensitivities. As you know, is a have uh, some data is need, need to confidential, especially in the military, is one big issue. And another thing is the polit politics and the regals in different countries, it also has a barrier to make the framework and the data sharing protocol and standards. And the last one is the capacity infrastructure because the, the difference between in each country is different uh, the capacity infrastructure among the country. Does it make it difficult to make the standards and the format and the sharing to coordination? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just a reminder of the audience, we are getting questions in the Q&A of the app, but if you have questions for our panelists, I have a few more I'd like to ask them, but love to hear from what you want to talk to them about. So make sure you do the Hoover app online as well. We'll be keeping an eye on that. Um, for YUD, so similar question for you in regards to what I just talked to Cityport about. How has SSA sharing been discussed in our upper staff and ASEAN? And what do you see as ways in which to meet those challenges in sharing SSA data? Yes, thank you so much, Victoria, again. So um, as, as we all know that uh, Asian countries is uh, quite a huge number uh, of, of people here. And then uh, I, I, I forgot to remind that, uh, for example, Indonesia, we every year we have uh, several debris coming in to our country and uh, including the, uh, the rocket uh, uh, upper stages. And even if you see in 6 June last, uh, last uh, month, uh, uh, Starship landed in Indian Ocean, right? Which is near our area. And that's why it's very important for us in Asia Pacific to establish uh, common goals together. And then um, we, we, we see that this will be increased in, in the future. So in 2022, when we have uh, APR SAF in Vietnam, we try to establish um, uh, and, and discuss about the safe and sustainable space activities for orbital utilization. And we will try to introduce and discuss SNMA activities, uh, uh, which are, are critical for, for, for the mission. And also, we, we thought that it's very important to have a common protocol between, between the countries, uh, in the regional, of course, and also standard. So I think in, in in APRSAF uh, last year uh, as well in Jakarta, in Indonesia, we continue to discuss about this one. And then um, we think that there are several um, key strategies that we have to uh, uh, commonly agree on that. The first one is, of course, this standardization of the data format and protocols. Um, and then how we can in, uh, uh, engage uh, or uh, increase the capacity building and training for SSA. And then also, uh, this is the most important, how can we develop the trust and transparency, right, between us? And then also the technology in infrastructure, because not all the Asian countries have this kind of technology, so we really need to establish this, uh, this technology of development together. And another important thing, of course, to make a policy and legal framework for all, all, all of this. So this is uh, something that we, uh, I think, I believe in, in the APR staff and all the uh, Asian meeting, like already mentioned by my colleague from Thailand, we continue to discuss, and uh, I believe that uh, very soon we will have some kind of okay common understanding between us. Thank you, Victoria. That'd be great. Um, so Sugu Yomi san uh, space domain awareness often incorporates analysis to determine when there are activities outside of normal patterns of life. Is there enough regional capability to do that level of assessment of SSA data analysis in order to detect potential threats? And if not, how do we get there? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the question about is it enough level? Uh, my answer is I personally think there's no enough level because the number of space objects, including uh, satellites uh, and space debris, are increasing very rapidly. And the threats in space domain is also there are various kinds of ASAT, and some countries are conduct ASAT tests and creating so much debris. So uh, there is no end. So we have to keep increasing our capability uh, in SSA. And this is my personal opinion. In order to do that, 
uh, firstly, we have to have uh, good sensors and uh, processing system and data management system and, and so forth. And by doing that, uh, we will be able to uh, grasp the space domain, what's going on more accurately. And so there are many challenges. So we have to have a introduce state of the art technologies because the, uh, in this domain, the uh, advancement of technologies also very rapid. So we have to uh, catch up very quickly uh, to that aim we created an uh, office in the uh, center of Tokyo, uh, where uh, the many startup companies are gathering. So uh, by doing that, uh, we are trying to uh, introduce the latest technologies. And the second is, uh, as I said, the international collaboration. So. Uh, we have uh, good relations with the U.S. Space Force and also uh, like-minded countries, Space Forces. So uh, such multilateral cooperation and the intergovernment agencies' cooperation, as well as the collaboration between industries. So government, industries, and academias. We have to uh, make a good coordination with those. By doing that, uh, we'll have uh, uh, good technologies and good uh, systems and good ideas. So uh, anyway, we have to keep increasing and we have to make effort endlessly, I think. All right. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, for Neil Kumar, uh, where do you see the starting points for cooperating on SSA data sharing within the Asia Pacific regions residing? And what steps can India and other countries take to kick off that cooperation? Yeah, thank you. Before answering to this question, I just want to inform uh, there are many initiatives uh, across the countries for the sustainability of the outer space activities and also, especially, the containing the debris growth. Um, as uh, ESA is having zero debris charter, like that many countries are, uh, come, national agencies have come up with uh, their initiatives. India also uh, declared last April, uh, during the IADC annual meet, Chairman Isra declared an intent of India for a debris free space missions by 2030. So all activities uh, started uh, regarding the uh, rocket bodies as well as uh, spacecraft at the end of their life to do uh, proper uh, uh, post-mission disposal. And also, uh, maximum possible will have a controlled re-entry. In case it is not possible, it will be deorbited to a particular orbit, to an orbit, low orbit, so that life will be less than five years. And also, there are many other initiatives for uh, setting up of the uh, network of observational facilities as part of DFSM, Debris Free Space Mission Initiative intended by India. Also, uh, for cooperating with other agencies, coordinating properly, and also to support other uh, emerging or aspiring space nations, uh, we have set up ISRO system for safe and sustainable space operations management. It's called IS4OM. In ISTRAC, ISTRAC is the uh, ISRO center for uh, telemetry, tracking, and command network. And there we set up this IS4OM facility. There we are supporting even uh, India's private industries. And we are ready to support other uh, nations as well. So international co cooperation, coordination, it's one of the important uh, vertical for India's SSA system. Thank you. Thank you. So Muriel, how is the U.S. handling SSA cooperation within the Asia Pacific? Uh, what are your priorities and plans? And what do you think will be the likely direction for global SSA cooperation? Sure, thank you for asking. So as we're building the <coughs> excuse me, the track system in the United States, from the very beginning, we recognize that that's not the only SSA system in the world. And there are already other SSA systems, independent systems that exist and more that are being developed. Uh, and we believe it is critical 
if we truly want to support spaceflight safety, for those systems to be communicating with each other, to be coordinated uh, with each other. So even though we have independent systems, there needs to be a dialogue. So we put out a, a vision for global coordination on SSA, um, really just stating that basic idea. Let's start a dialogue. Let's ensure that we all recognize the need for global coordination on this issue. Um, and I think Asia Pacific plays a, a really critical role in that with a number of um, very important and active uh, space actors. So we really need to have cooperation from Asia Pacific, from you know, truly global uh, engagement. In terms of how, uh, how that coordination moves forward, you know, I think uh, to a large extent that needs to be defined within the international community as part of that conversation. Um, but I thought the comments by Dr. Hasby earlier um, were really right in line with a lot of our thinking. So uh, looking at technical standards for exchanging information so that we're understanding what, what each other are saying. Um, looking at issues of trust and transparency, so what, what type of information do we need to exchange with each other? Um, two days ago, or three days ago now maybe, uh, the track system held a listening session where we put out a draft of our tracks data policy, uh, and that really puts out some of the ideas that we have in terms of information sharing. So if you go back, you can watch the video of that listening session or, or read the documents. Um, you can see we're really encouraging owner operators, uh, for example, to share uh, their ephemerides uh, with maneuver plans and covariance. Uh, we're encouraging them to do that openly and trying to fil facilitate that with the track system. Um, we're also looking at with some of our own data that we produce, for example, close approach notifications that, that happen in these uh, high risk events, to share those openly uh, so that everyone has access to that information and can see um, some of the risky things that are happening in, in space. And I think that type of transparency and trying to be more um, proactive and concrete about what is the information that we share and that we make available to, to everyone, really, um, I think is some of the really important first steps. Great. Thank you. Um, we're getting some really interesting questions from the audience, but I encourage you to keep sending them on in because we have a time for good chat. So now these questions are just going to be forever wants to answer them. Um, first question, I'd love to hear your thoughts on what role do you expect private SSA providers to play in these regional and global efforts? Thoughts from the panel. I can Mario, yeah. try and take that. So, uh, you know, for us, we're the, the Department of Commerce, uh, you know, working with the commercial sector is it's hugely important for us. Um, that includes, of course, the, the commercial spacecraft operators, but also the commercial SSA sector. Um, and we've had a number of engagements. I mentioned these Pathfinder experiments where we are working with the commercial sector already. I think they're going to be really important for providing information and capabilities that get built into the track system itself. But I think they're also going to play a really important role in the community in providing uh, other augmenting, augmenting those basic services that are provided by the government. Right. So we're going to provide for free the services that you really need to support safety. But there's a lot that operators want to do that goes beyond safety, that might be about efficiency, that might be about uh, design and other things happening in the space environment. And for that, I think the commercial sector is able to really uh, hone in, provide those more advanced services. Thank you. Uh, rest of the panel, what are your thoughts? Yes. Yes. Yes, the use of commercial power is vitally important because uh, nowadays the activity in the space domain, the ratio of commercial satellites is very, very mm -hmm. uh, rapidly increasing. So uh, I know that uh, joint commercial operation cell in US Space Force, that is a framework, uh, the collaboration between uh, the military and private companies. I think uh, those kinds of uh, collaboration will be effective and uh, it will be, um, I hope it will be a successful uh, case. So anyway, the collaboration between uh, not only government, but also uh, commercial companies are really, really effective. Thank you. Uh, Neil. Yeah. Uh, in fact, um, there, there is a definite uh, role for uh, private uh, or commercial agencies in SSA. 
due to uh, various reasons. One, one of the reason is the funding. Co funding coming from governmental will be limited, but a private funding can be uh, so much depending upon the uh, commercial aspects of the uh, product. Now, if you see, uh, and also, you see, if you can get a good data, more accurate data, of uh, objects with less size, say two centimeter and above or one centimeter and above, that will be very good for SSA purpose. So to avoid, to safeguard space flight safety for that. So that way they will have a definite role and many, many, many are there, already there. Even in India, we have one Digandara, a private uh, SSA industry who are working on setting up of uh, many uh, observational facilities and the constellation of uh, space-based observations. So they will have a definite role. Thank you. Why did you wanna? Yeah. So uh, agree with uh, my my colleague from uh, ISRO. So yes, uh, the important thing how the commercial actors can be involved in the SSEA, I, uh, I think is is very crucial. And then, as mentioned by uh, my colleague here, so uh, at first we, uh, as a government, we have very limited uh, budget as well. And then, moreover, we want to establish what we call as a space economy, right? So which it must be involved the commercial sectors in this domain. So what happens now in Indonesia? We uh, uh, there are several uh, uh, private company looking into this business type of a SACA, and uh, even they are trying to they are discussing with us uh, about establishing the SACA radar in one of the location in Indonesia because it's very very strategic location. We are located in equator. And then we are open for that. And then, uh, but the other things that we really need to discuss again, also uh, uh, mentioned by uh, my colleague from US, is about what is the framework, the cooperation between the private sector, the governments, and this some kind of uh, data protocol or, uh, or or transparency that we need to establish. Thank you, Stephen. Yes, is a, I think it's the same issue in the, um, many countries, also in Thailand. That's why we have to push to have the policy and the milestone uh, to allocate the budget to working on in the develop the facility in the SSA. So, and now today we have, uh, have got some budget and try to allocate some, some tracking in, in Thailand. And also we have uh, discussed in this one in the ASEAN level to uh, how to we uh, share the facility because uh, as you know it's one country cannot do tracking everything mm. orbit around the earth so they need to share the, the data that's why we have the SSA STM project and uh, the next step we uh, think is uh, in APR sub I don't know I think uh, 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 is next time we have some discussion in, in this level about the starting from the framework how to cooperate and the sharing the data and how the obstacle between country which data is possible to share and I hope that, that in near future we will we make something like a standardized and cooperation together uh, especially the frameworks and working on in the standardized for the formats that is the first step and uh, I think it's something is challenged because some data is sensitive maybe it's not some form the, the uh, commercial data is possible to share together thank you thank you uh, so next question is an interesting one. How do you help ensure that different operators from different countries using potentially different systems aren't making important decisions about their spacecraft with different and potentially conflicting data sets? This is not Asia Pacific, but I think it's a good, interesting question for us to say in general. Thoughts from the panel? Yeah, I mean, to me, that that challenge is at the heart of the need for global coordination and, and kind of the reason that we put out that vision for, for global SSA coordination. If you don't coordinate and you have a bunch of independent SSA centers, we know that they're going to come up with different answers, right? I mean, I think that's happening already today where we use different input data, we use different algorithms, you will get different answers. Um, and I think, you know, at some level that can be okay if you're coordinating with each other and you're aware of when those differences are and you have a process to deal with those. Um, 
so I often go to the weather, uh, weather community as, as a place for analogies, and we have multiple global weather models, and they do sometimes put out different answers, right? But we share that information with each other. We can compare those models. We can think about what applies best in different situations and still make good decisions. So to me, it's that information sharing piece that's really at the heart of truly ensuring spaceflight safety and dealing with that challenge. All right, so information sharing. Uh, would you guys agree? Is that the best way to handle this? Or are there different ways to do it, different ways to apply it? Uh, generally speaking, uh, we understand that mutual collaboration is important and beneficial. We know that. However, uh, the each discussion, the detailed discussion is very tough because mm -hmm. the capabilities are different. And who will pay the cost and who will all the responsibility, and who will get the benefit. That kind of discussion is really tough. So, however, we have to have a discussion and we have to have a solution. But uh, right. I think it will be very, uh, not easy, but uh, very important and yeah. worth discussing. The important things very often aren't very easy, right? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, so uh, same as uh, other, other colleague mentioned. So, for example, how, we, how can we pre predict close approach? Then there's a lot of algorithms involved, and it might be different between one country to the other country. And of, of course, it depends again on the data, how accurate your data, then you can make a good prediction, right? So, the data sharing is very important, but it's not an easy, as already mentioned, because uh, yeah, it's kind of, uh, okay, so many details that we need to discuss. And then that's something that we realized when we have a discussion, when I was also in the speaker in APRSAP in 2022 in Vietnam. That's the reason why we, we believe that we need to continue to make more detailed discussion on this kind of data sharing. We agree on some platform is important, but then how this flow can go and which standard with, that we need to use, right? So this kind of things that we need to discuss in details. Yeah. In fact, if you see the present scenario, operational spacecraft, if it uh, has a close approach with uh, debris objects, yes, you can surely do your work with the proper prediction of the whether if it is uh, within the collision probability threshold, we can go for a maneuver, design it, analyze it and do the maneuver. This is not a so big complex situation if data is very good, accurate data if you get. But between the operational spacecraft, if it comes, such a close approach comes, it becomes complex. That is coordinating with the spacecraft operators, owners becoming a very big issue. Mostly some of the time we will not have the, even the contact IDs, contact informations. And also many operators won't provide the ephemerides required for the, whatever the manuals are there for the next few days, etc. So we cannot do single-handedly any collision avoidance manual if such a situation occurs. So that is giving a very big challenge. So there is no other way for us uh, between the satellite operators to coordinate among themselves, conduct among themselves without latency. Otherwise, it will become a very complex situation and it may lead to uh, catastrophic collisions. Yes. Um, I think this... Uh uh, if you give the chance for the, the private company to working on, it's quite difficult because it needs policy to support, and that is one. And uh, we asked um, all the panels to discuss it about the standard and uh, how to coordinate and a framework. I think it's a, um, many uh, big countries they keep working on this one, but it's quite difficult for to uh, find a way to uh, categorize which one is how to do that because sensitive for the data in the military as well, or other assets, and safety assets. So I think it's a food from uh, policy that may help from in each um, country is working on this one and uh, uh, try to um, uh, discuss and how to maybe start some, some data first, maybe the, uh, just active satellite, some commercial, then include some military, and then we step on to discuss our framework, how to, uh, to share the data or some system, where to allocate the system, or maybe everyone have 
uh, the same system can can to uh, to get the, 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 this data. Uh, it is, I think it's first step to should to validate this one because if we keep uh, think about the whole the whole system, it's quite difficult to um, to implement in a, in a few years. Maybe take a time, but it's good to start. Can I add one thing? I was just going to say, I think one, one thing that's important across these, um, the, the comments that you can kind of hear is that there are different types of data and information. And I think that's a challenge too, to think through, you know, there can be challenges in sharing certain sensor data, but perhaps the owner operator ephemerities, sometimes those are, uh, people are more willing to share or some of the more highly processed outputs. Um, like those close approach notifications. And I think, you know, that's a challenge for us to, to think through is at what levels can we share information? Yeah, it's not only data sharing challenges, what you're mm. adding to that, different uh, agencies will have different sets of data from different sensors, different accuracies, how to fuse this data mm. and utilize for a proper uh, collision avoidance scheme. Mm. That is a challenge. Yeah, absolutely it is. Uh, a good interesting question from the audience. Um, how do the panelists see collaboration with China on SSA? And maybe I'm going to change that verb. How do the panelists see coordination or consultation with China on SSA? Thoughts? Hmm. <laughs> <coughs> maybe. Yeah. yeah, so for example, we. Uh, Two or three years ago, we got one uh, big um, uh, uh, upper stage of, we believe, China rockets entering our Celebes uh, Island. And then, uh, no, so, sorry, in, in Borneo Islands. And then, um, use, uh, as, as we know in the uh, uh, Space Act, we have to report this to the, the country belongs to uh, the, the, the objects. And then, yeah. And so far, no, there is no answer, so <laughs> we keep it. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, as, as I mentioned in my previous uh, talk, so uh, we are now okay, establishing some kind of collaboration uh, about this uh, the SSA, uh, but mostly in the research level, uh, especially, to, uh, to uh, um, utilize our Timao uh, obs uh, National Observatory, uh, but still in um, in the um, uh, research base level so far. So that's maybe I can share with you. Ariel. Yeah, so I'll add, when we talk about global coordination on SSA, we do mean truly global. So including China is a major actor in, in space with a large number of space objects and, and planning to put many more up. Um, they have to be a part of the conversation uh, about space flight safety. Um, you know, we're dealing in the same physical space. Physics does not respect the political challenges. Um, you know, so I think it is important to, to have that truly global conversation. Um, but it is challenging. It, it's hard to even take the, the first steps. Yeah. Anyone else? Yes. Yes, um, I think it's the one way uh, to do that is the because uh, we, as I know, we have a uh, app score, this is a uh, half in the one that China have lead in the, uh, the rich, uh, Spain Athens region and Thailand also in this one. Maybe it is put put some issue in this one and uh, to discuss about the data sharing and um, framework how to share, like like you said, it lab to have to go both to share this data this one. It's possible to 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 do is like uh, the ASEAN we have working on in the SSAS project together. Uh, so, question came in. Uh, for each country, what is the biggest impediment you encounter to data sharing? Anyone? Surely it can't be that easy. <laughs> mm. First of all, country uh, requires data to share. <laughs> okay. <laughs> as far as uh, many countries are concerned, they don't have uh, observational facilities to share. And uh, what they can share is the ephemerides of the operational spacecraft that they will have. But the problem comes in the 
and transparent uh, sharing of the data requires a confidence in the other part. So confidence building measures between the agencies, between the operators, between the owners is the requirement for a proper data sharing. Apart from that, uh, there can be many political, regional issues which will prohibit the free data sharing, uh, accurate data sharing. So that is the main thing I feel. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. For me, the most challenge is no data, <laughs> mm. right? Nobody wants to share the data. And then um, this is also usually happens to us uh, because, uh, for example, some of the country launched their rockets and there is no information that uh, they will enter our country. And suddenly we got the upper stage immediately in front of our home. <laughs> and we have to find out who is the owner of these upper stages, right? And it happens also, uh, but finally we, we understand, okay, this is from China, this is from US, and, uh, uh, but we thanks ISRO anyway, because ISRO always report us that they want to launch uh, uh, the rockets and, and it might uh, 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 down. Pass to, over. Yeah, pass over. So something like that. We need at least uh, some uh, information to, to share the, the data. And, um, and also, uh, I think the other challenge that, that we have, for example, uh, if we get a close approach notification uh, from um, uh, from US, for example, and we know that the object is belongs to some other parties, and then there is no coordination, just keep quiet and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very difficult, right? So um, yeah, I think it's very important to, as again, uh, the things about transparency and uh, uh, um, uh, trust uh, uh, between each other, As especially when you would like to have something that will make a big impact in some countries. So we really need to uh, establish this uh, data sharing. Maria? Yeah, I'll say, so I think, you know, it was brought up earlier, the, one of the challenges is a lot of the sensors that exist today for SSA can be national security sensors, um, and that can be a challenge for, for sharing. Um, I think the other thing that I see, though, is just the norms in, in the community of there isn't a history of a lot of sharing and openness necessarily, and so um, sometimes the default is not to share. And I see this, you know, for example, in conversations with the owner operators, sometimes um, they don't necessarily have a, a problem sharing their ephemerities. They just never have before. So the, they're, you know, the question is kind of why should I do that? And um, a little skepticism. So I think those earlier comments about the importance of building trust, right? And, uh, you know, making it, starting to change that norm that it really is useful to provide that data openly and continuing to communicate why, you know, why is it important to share that data? How does it contribute to spaceflight safety? Why is spaceflight safety important? Um, you know, everyone in this room, I think, knows the answers to those questions, um, but really spreading that awareness beyond uh, the immediate space community so that people recognize the importance of this challenge and we can start to kind of change that norm. Thank you. So a um, question came in, what interest do countries have in buying commercial SSA data or services besides plans from tracks? Besides. Is there any interest? Uh, yeah, uh, okay, I can answer a little bit on that. Uh, first of all, we look, we are not sure as of now, maybe in future it will be more clear regarding the accuracy of the alerts or the data, what they provide by the uh, commercial SSA companies. Are they matured enough to give uh, accurate data as well as alerts? As of now, it is not sure, but I am sure that in due course, within few years or uh, it will be perfectly, they will be able to do it. And uh, see, space industry, if you see, it is related to the space economy of the economy of the nation, national economy. Space industry and the space economy is, plays a very important role for a nation's economy. So that is why SSA industries, especially private industry, commercial industries, uh, they ha we have to support them 
nationally by government has to support and they have to come up and also we hope that for space flight safety they will be giving a good data better data so that we can safeguard our uh, spacecraft operational spacecraft your thoughts on the panel no, please Yes, for the support the, the private company in country. So um, Thailand is also working on in the animation for have a national uh, space master plan. So he, uh, finally, it should be have the space economy in Thailand. And uh, the first thing we have to do is, for example, uh, the sensor to tracking. We, as we know, is have a radar and optical. For the radar in Thailand, it's quite difficult because it involves in the military is possible. So this one we are uh, looking for the way and uh, how to control and uh, possible to the private company to uh, use the radar for the tracking. This one is to support this one. And, and as, as you know, it's, uh, invest for the private company is quite very really high. And Thailand is uh, plan to allocate the budget for some infrastructures that to support the, uh, the private company to start from this uh, SSA's the company. Thank you. Uh, well, we're just getting close to the end of our session. Um, I wanted to ask a, kind of a wrap-up question to the panel, and if you have any other last thoughts you want to share with the audience, this would be the time to do that. But, you know, thinking ahead, maybe the next five years or so, in an ideal world, uh, what do you think SSA cooperation should look like in the Asia-Pacific in 2030? Will it look the same as it currently does? Will there be regional hubs of SSA collection and data sharing? Will there be maybe an overarching globalized network? series of individual providers or something else I failed to think of in this question. What do you guys think? What are we going to be looking at in the next five years? Okay, um, okay. thank you very much. Uh, personally, I think the ideal world, uh, the overarching framework will be uh, formed, will be more uh, beneficial for the space we share, there's no national border. So uh, if it's possible, it's ideal to have a unified rule and uh, very uh, stand standardized uh, usage of the space. It will be beneficial, I think, but as I mentioned, it will be very difficult to make a consensus because mm -hmm. the capabilities are different and the national interests are different. So it will be hard. So uh, in realistic, it will take a long time. So by then, anyway, uh, the number of space objects uh, keeps increasing. So we have to have a space flight safety. So uh, in reality, by then, we will have a, a regional hub will be a solution to okay. some extent. For that purpose, each country should make an effort by uh, having sensor or SSA capabilities. Uh, Japan will introduce the deep space radar in near future and also will introduce the laser ranging system to determine the distance uh, of satellites. Uh, by doing that, uh, we will uh, try to uh, make sure what's going on in space and we'll try to contribute to the stable use of space. But also, uh, we will make an effort, to uh, multilateral effort, to share the good use of space. So uh, we wish to have a good uh, international norms to for the stable use of space. Thank you. Great, thank you. And the two minutes we have left, let's just oh, go sorry. down the line. <laughs> no, that's great. Uh, Neil Kumar, what do you think? Yeah. Um, in fact, if you see the answer into her question, actually, regional hubs. If you see, I will just give an example for um, lunar uh, orbital close approaches. But there are now presently Chandrayaan-2 orbiter, LRO and KPLO. They are nearly in the same orbit, polar orbits. And it comes close many times, critically close. Uh, and many times, um, collision avoidance manuals, we are doing it. Today also it is going. There are some close approaches between these things. 
but there are this limited number of operators. So coordinating with them and getting the data sharing is a good example there. It is properly working, perfectly working, and we can do much about it. Lunar orbits, because there are less number of operators. But if you see in the our uh, space uh, orbiting objects, many countries, hundreds of countries, and each country there are many operators, number of operators are very large. So coordinating each and every one will be an extremely Herculean task. But the and uh, having a space traffic management system at a single place also will be very difficult getting consensus. But maybe this is a very good ex very good idea of to have regional hubs, uh, which is uh, which can enable data sharing between the regions like uh, Asia Pacific region one like that if you have. So, and if they coordinate among the, their own spacecraft operators and get the data and share it uh, transparently and uh, confidently, so that will be a very good idea. Thank you. Yeah. Very short. Um, uh, we, in ideal world, having the, uh, at least regional policy with the framework, and then, um, then we have collaborative platform with standardized data protocol. That's all we need. That's all we need. All right. Good. <laughs> yes. Um, as you know, is a number of space object is increased rapidly and still going on to continue as this one. As, and the effects of all the country have a satellite or space activity. So I think it's like um, as you all you know is um, the framework the, for the coordination and the standardized data. How we can share the data together. How we uh, uh, all design some mechanism to trust together which tidy data is can we can do that that be for, for our uh, safety on and uh, sustainability thank you thank you mario yeah so also trying to strike that balance between being optimistic but also practical i think it is possible that within 5 years we can have a network of closely coordinated independent national and regional ssa centers that are in communication with each other in order to support space flight safety well, let's hope that's what happens. Yeah. <laughs> it's up to make you guys to make it happen. Yeah, exactly. And the people in this room. All right. So the kind of the themes that I heard from this discussion were the importance of transparency, of communication, of coordination, complication, but doable. So with that, please join me in thanking this panel for a fantastic discussion.